when you see when you see these old guys on the Howard Stern show like Don Felder, <laughs> and, you know, an amazing career, but they weren't talking going forward very much. They were talking about the past and you know his career with the Eagles, which was pretty remarkable. His contribution to that band after uh, Bernie Layden left. And Joe Walsh joined, but uh, Don Felder was, he, he wrote Victim of Love. Uh, well, no, he, yeah, he wrote that, and he also wrote uh, Hotel California. Pretty amazing, <laughs> an amazing contribution. But apparently he was ostracized by Glenn Frey and uh, Don Henley. But, you know, yeah, because there was a, a vicious lawsuit that went down. Uh, and, <laughs> You know, what happens to the guys? These guys are, are so rich. And I don't know about Don Felder, but I can tell you Don Henley and Glenn Frey, are, they've got, they're so rich and they got so much money. Why, why are they nitpicking about that crap? I don't know. I don't know. That's weird. But uh, I like to think that I wouldn't have, if I was that successful, especially as an artist, as a musician, I wouldn't, you know, I would be so grateful that, that I... I've signed good deals, you know, they obviously have signed good deals. It's funny, they were talking about the, the, the richest drummers in existence right now. And uh, Don Henley was not on that list. <laughs> and he is definitely one of the most successful drummers ever as far as money goes. Um, because apparently he and, and, and Glenn Frey uh, got ownership of the Eagles after Bernie Layden left. And especially after Randy Meissner left. Um, the addition of Timothy Schmidt and Joe Walsh, uh, that they were like uh, independent contractors, you know? And uh, it, it's the, the business aspect of, of, of that level of the music industry is just so bizarre because it's all individual arrangements you know with each other or, or with the record company or both and if those arrangements are defective or uh, they, they don't <laughs> they don't give the artists typically you know i've never heard of the artist ripping off the record company i've heard of many stories of the record company ripping off the artist <laughs> and the the the, the, the list of that is pretty long. Uh, the Beatles, uh, Creedence Clearwater Revival, uh, Billy Joel, um, that's one of the worst. Uh, the band Poco, you know, I heard about them being ripped off by their managers in the record, record company early. But, you know, if you go back and you look at uh, movies of, of that band in concert, they, they really didn't have any energy at all. <laughs> they didn't have any energy. I mean, it's just like, you think Richie Furay would have known better that, you know, hey man, if you're gonna, if you're gonna be a successful band, you better turn on the audience somehow. You don't want the audience to be sitting there bored to death. And, and a number of artists make that mistake too. A good number of artists make that mistake. But uh, there's other bands, oh, um, uh, uh, Steppenwolf. <laughs> now, that was more of a dispute between the band members. So, I think after their initial run, I think they, I'm going to guess and say they had a five year deal with the record company and they put out lots of popular stuff. Uh, Steppenwolf. They had a lot, but their record stopped selling uh, as as well at towards the end of the deal. And so at, by the end of the, of whatever it was, a three or five year term at the record company, the record company did not renew their, renew them. But man, they, they had a lot of hits. Enough so that every person in that band should have been able to just, you know, take it easy for the rest of your life. Because, you know, you're gonna get royalties every time your song is played, as long as you're the person that's pl playing on the song. You know, like if you're the drummer, you're the guitar player, you're the lead singer, you're the bass player, uh, as, as long as you're one of those people. So the story is, and this is an amazing story, 
and and it's kind of like couched now though because I think there was a lawsuit or something and I don't think John Kay is allowed to, is allowed to say anything he wants about that. I, I'm not sure, but the original video that I saw on this matter, it, you you can't find it on YouTube anymore. And so what happened is, um, so the band it was is the end of the run for the band, and then uh, uh, somebody approached them and said, you know, hey, you know, we'll we'll do a revival or something like that, you know. Uh, let's get Steppenwolf back together. And John Kay said, no, he, he wasn't, he wasn't going to do that at that time, at that point in time, he wasn't going to do it. And so the rest of the band, and this is the original Steppenwolf band, they all decided, well, they were going to get another lead singer and another guitar player and start Steppenwolf all over again. Uh, and John Kay said that he didn't want him to do that. But they did it anyway, and he got so pissed off, he was going to go over and, and, and start duking with these guys. And his wife said, that's not what you want to do. His wife sounded pretty intelligent, too. That's not what you want to do. You go over, tell them how upset you are, but that you'll be okay if they sign all of the old Stephen Wolf records and songs over to you, and they don't have ownership of that stuff anymore, and they can keep all the new Stephen Wolf stuff going forward. <laughs> And that, yeah, how could you be so stupid? <laughs> I mean, all you gotta do is take one half of a step backwards and just look around at the music industry and see how many people there are that don't make it. I mean, and it's common knowledge, you know, something like one out of a hundred bands that a, that a record company signs will actually make it. And, and definitely not like a Steppenwolf remake. <laughs> so very doubtful that, that that's going to make it. And when they were interviewing the, the, the guys that wanted to start the new Steppenwolf, the, the one guy was saying to himself as he was looking at the deal, he was saying, he was looking at the, at the, the paperwork and he, and he looked at it and he was thinking to himself, I really don't want to sign this. I don't want to sign this. I don't want to sign this. But then he does. And then the next video of him, like, okay, so the, the new Steppenwolf band lasted, like, from what I understand, six months before the record company canceled them. Because they, they, when I saw them, I, and I saw them I, and I heard them, I, I, I couldn't even listen to them for, for a minute. They were so bad. It was just not, I mean, it's obvious that this band's not going to make it. <laughs> not obvious to the old Steppenwolf guys. So they... They lose the rights to all, all the music that they made with Steppenwolf. And so, you know, they're crying in their beer and sulking and stuff. And, I, you know, I, I, I think their money situation, well, I know their money situation went downhill. But so let me finish the story. So, um, these guys, uh, they lose their deal. And they, they don't have anything to fall back on, apparently. I, 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 you know, that's, that's sure what it looked like. Because the guy that was saying he didn't want to sign this deal... The next thing you see is him driving one of these golf carts at a driving range, getting all the golf balls back from where, where the people have been hitting the golf balls. He's driving this, you know, he's in a, in a cage, a little vehicle, because he's out there while the people are still hitting the golf balls. And he's driving this thing around, getting golf balls hit at him and picking up. This is a guy that was a rock star. I don't know if he was a drummer, I'm not sure. I think might, something might have happened to the drummer, but I think this was a guitar player. But anyway, so, you know, it, it was a disaster for, for him so, but, and, and the other guys. But so John Kay, the lead singer from Steppenwolf, he owns all this stuff, but it's not selling. You know, it's you know, like, it's the early 80s, and uh, Steppenwolf was like a 60s or maybe early 70s band. But that's it. But they, they did really, really well then, too. So, like, if they, they hold on to the rights to their music... Uh, they can put it on cruise control for the rest of their life. So, so the band is, I mean, these guys are out. John Kay is not rolling in it. I mean, he's okay. Uh, he's, he's doing all right, from what I understand. But here's the deal, man. If you remember the early 80s, boy, things change all the time. You know, things are always changing. Early 80s, people were converting their vinyl collections to CD, keeping their vinyl, but... CD is so much easier 
to 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 use uh, uh, then a turntable with a needle and the, the whole contraption i mean the, i bought a compact stereo system it was really good it was a sanyo and it was a combination of a receiver you know for fm radio a turntable on top and two really good speakers and it sounded terrific and i could plug my guitar into it and cancel out the speakers and practice on my bass while I'm listening to another. It was a, it was a great, great, a, a, a great machine. Um, but when CDs really caught on, I mean, it's so much easier. Uh, the CD players like this and, and the, a, a, a compact, like a stereo system, is this elaborate contraption, you know, and they're cool, but in terms of convenience. So, and plus, you know, you put your CDs in your car. So this huge uh, surge in, uh, in CD sales, just, it, 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 it's, it's like, it's like a disruptive, most disruptive uh, technology, something uh, in, in an industry, they start off slow, but then when they catch on, you know, when, when the general public really catches on to the value of it, they go for it. So, so John Kay gets all this money from the CD conversions of the old Steppenwolf music, but that all goes to him now. And there's, you know, I, I kind of feel sorry for the guys that, 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 that missed out on that. But then again, I don't, because I've missed out on so much. I missed out on uh, dollar cost averaging to Microsoft, um, dollar cost averaging to Oracle, to Cisco, uh, you know, like these, the, and I was following these companies, but I didn't know about investing. I didn't know how to invest in dollar cost averaging. If I started dollar cost averaging when, when Microsoft went public, I'd have no trouble, right? I, I'd easily have just everything that, that I want to have, my, especially my own place, but I didn't do that. So I was a photographer. <laughs> I was, a, I was a, an artist. I was a photographic artist. But that, that shit goes out the window when you have kids. Because nobody really cares about the artistry in your work. Uh, and and I, I didn't either when I, when I had kids because I realized, uh oh, kids are expensive, man. I got to get out and bust my hump and make sure that they got a place to live, a roof over their head, um, food on the table, all that stuff, you know. And so time went by, and in my photography business, you know, it was struggling, and uh, I got the break to get into Bell Atlantic, which was the professional break of my life, as far as my financial break of my life. But you know, you know, the th thing about photography too is that, like, you know, and what was going, what was happening at this time, you know, when I was uh, when I got the break with Bell, there was a huge transformation going from analog to digital. And it had been going on for a little while, but then suddenly it just, it, it really went, you know, internet access and stuff like that became super important. Um, and uh, the te technology has just unbelievably evolved. <laughs> 90s, early 2000s, like, and then 2009, Bitcoin, uh, and Tesla, <clears throat> it's it's an amazing, been an amazing transformation. And luckily, I got on board late with Bitcoin and Tesla. But I'm on board. I am on board with both of those technologies. Problem for me now is there's an election uh, in about a month. Excuse me. A little bit more, no, I'm more like two months um, and for, for president. And they're, they're saying if the Democrats win, you know, business and the stock market are going to just going to collapse and, and go in the tank, um, especially Bitcoin. If Trump wins, the market and, 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 and Bitcoin will, will skyrocket. So, you know, how do you prepare for that? You have to bet the right way. It's almost like putting your money on the roulette wheel on, on one color or the other, you know. So I've got to figure out how I'm going to protect myself there. And uh, 
I'm, uh, what I'm thinking, I mean, we'll have to look at the poll numbers, I guess, but they're saying it's, the election's really close. <laughs> My God. Uh, well, you know, the Biden-Trump election wasn't that close. You know, it really wasn't that close. Biden won convincingly. He took Georgia and he took Arizona, which were two Republican strongholds. He didn't get Ohio. He's not going to get Ohio this time either because <laughs> of this moron J.D. Vance <laughs> coming, his running mate, who's just like, 